guides here everybody. Welcome to the first video in the new Daisy Guides channel schedule. Today we're going to take a quick look into what Daisy Zero is all about, taking a gander at the upcoming new map called Podogorsk while we're at it, and then wrap up with a bit of standalone info. First up is Daisy Zero. Back when the Daisy mod was getting updates few and far in between, the Daisy Zero guys started up a new branch of the Daisy code. It's actually been in the works now for quite some time, and only recently has been one of the de facto mods to play with Daisy with. So what is actually in Daisy Zero? Daisy Zero is currently primarily a reworking of the Chernarus map. Like other mods out there, there are new weapons, skins, and vehicles added to the mod. You'll still find your array of typical Daisy weapons like the M1911, double barreled shotgun, and the DMR, but there are plenty new weapons for you guys to find and use as well. The pistol strengths have been brought back to the earlier Daisy variants, so expect pistols to be more useful in gunfights and to take down zombies. But we're only scratching the surface here with Day Zero. One of the biggest complaints for Daisy was the number of enterable buildings. Since its release, Daisy Zero has created multiple interiors for buildings and is regularly creating more interiors for other buildings. Besides a few residential structures, the hospital building has been reworked, complete with roof access and some assorted hallways and stairs. The Chernarus map has been reworked as well. You find Chernarus to be a bit more realistic of a zombie apocalypse now. Debris is thrown around differently, there are car pileups in expected places, and even some signs have been added to depict a sort of history to Daisy Zero. Included with all that is a reworked item spawning system, redone for both realism as well as balancing out the game. Crash sites have been reworked as well. Instead of sites being spawned in at server restart, AI flown helicopters fly around and will randomly crash, spawning loot at the site of the crash. Performance has also been a large priority for Day Zero. Not only has the server-side code been rewritten for more efficiency, but the client-side files in Chernarus itself have been modified for better performance. Some players have noted a jump of 10 frames per second while playing Day Zero, so if the old Daisy mod ran too slowly on your computer, Day Zero is definitely worth checking out just to see how it runs for you now. I'd probably go on and on with Day Zero, but on a high level, I've summarized all there is to Day Zero. At the time of this update, the current version of Day Zero is 0.9.9.8, with a new version Day Zero coming out around the end of August if all goes well. Included with the next update is a new map called Podogorsk. The flow of the land and the style of the area closely resembles Chernarus, so if you're a fan of the original map, Podogorsk is well worth checking out once it's out. The map is smaller and more compact than Chernarus, but has been built around Day Zero strengths. You'll find cool vehicles like this sweet bike I found, and it even has a river flowing through the center of the map. If you're a donator over on the BMRF servers, you can get early beta access to the map, so check it out for yourself. Lastly, just some quick news on Standalone. For those that don't follow along on Rocket's Twitter or Reddit postings, Standalone has been on a slow but sure path to alpha play. It's taken this long because the game is no longer a reworking of the mod. It is in fact almost a total reworking of the engine itself. A large part is the migration to keeping the functions of the server totally on the server side. The old engine relied on both the players and the server to sort of share the code and trust each other, which is why hackers are so prevalent in the old DayZ. With the change, DayZ is becoming more and more of a true MMO. To get into a bit of the gritty stuff, the UI has minimized as much as possible. Gone are the icons for your health, hunger, and thirst meters, and instead, players are being fed visual and textual cues. When you're thirsty, you'll be told you feel thirsty. When you start to become more dehydrated, you'll be told that your mouth is dry. As your health deteriorates or you break bones, you begin limping or moving more slowly. The inventory menu and system has been totally reworked as well, allowing for you to drag and drop items, and clothes like vests will have their own inventory slots, allowing you to only store as much loot as you can in your pockets. Weapons are also in the works to be modified. They're becoming objects in code, which means they now can have attachments added and removed and have the ability to deteriorate with use. That's just the tip of the iceberg, people. Check out the most recent video over on the Daisy Dev Tumblr page, link in the description below. That's all for today's episode. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and as always, keep on derping. Why, bro? Why? Why?